All of the major news stories made simple and easy for your listening pleasure. We'll break it down for you in keywords for the segment. We're joined by Adam. Good morning. Howdy. No. <laughs> no. 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 Thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> too, too Texan for you. Do you? Do you what, I mean, do you guys say howdy? No, in the not UK? at all. No, I'm no, also no, not no. from Texas. So I don't know yeah. why you're extending it howdy to me. I don't know. <laughs> do they even say it in the U.S.? I have no idea. No? I have been away for ten years. Okay. I don't know my you... my American roots anymore. But you have been there recently, though. I was not in Texas. No. <laughs> so okay. I was in California so and New York. So it's just something that they say down south. Is it? <laughs> I assume so, but okay. good morning to you. Um, Hi. Thanks for joining happy hump, us. Happy hump day. Happy yeah, hump day. happy hump day. Was it chilly on your way to work? It certainly was. <laughs> Boy, it's really nippy out there, isn't it? It's frigid according to the latest KMA updates. It <sighs> seems that today is going to mark the coldest day of the year so far. Today? Yeah, this morning. Yeah, not mm. surprised. It's already feeling like that. Yeah, <laughs> of course. All right, so if you're just getting ready to go off for work, guys, be sure to bundle up. Mm-hmm. Let's jump into keyword news. We're going to clarify some of these major headlines for you. Uh, this is our first pick of the day. Apartment collapse. Uh, so the city of Gwangju has been hit once again by a collapse at a building construction site, that is. What's the latest from the story? Yeah, this is a... Uh, Recently, there was a, a similar incident yeah. that happened in Gwangju as well, and it uh, seems to have happened again. Um, and the latest is that there are six workers who are working on the site, uh, the rescue, rescue operation rather, uh, or the construction, sorry, right. were reportedly missing after the outer wall of the apartment uh, under construction collapsed. Um, one worker was also said to have been injured. The extent of the injuries hasn't been reported. Mm-hmm. We don't really know mm. Uh, much about that um, and also 10 vehicles were also reportedly buried under the rubble as well um, a few people were uh, um, uh, uh, were rescued and a few others managed to evacuate by themselves uh, as well now the wall was said to have collapsed yesterday just before 4 p.m. Uh, so it was a time when it was uh, being constructed on, when a lot of right. work was being done on it. Um, rescue work, however, had to be paused uh, due to concerns that remains of the wall and also a tower crane could collapse as well. So there's some safety issues there. And authorities will decide whether to resume the search after conducting um, safety checks this morning, in fact. And Kwangju police said it has formed a probe unit to begin investigating the exact cause of the accident mm. of which we know little about. So there's not really much to go on at the moment. Because it's still a developing story so early yeah. on, right? We're just talking about a story that developed yesterday, right? Yeah. Um, that's the nature of the story. But I guess what's concerning is that putting pieces together, why such similar occurrences in the right. same city? Is there is there a connection? I mean, these are all just, at this point, mm. questions, no answers. I mean, it's not just Kwangju as well. In yeah. Korea as a whole, um, it hasn't had the best track record in, in construction. Construction safety mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, pushing is a, a common term that's used when mm. it, uh, kind of this hasty, speedy hasty, the bali bali culture, the quick, yeah, the quick, rapid culture that they have in Korea. It's come under fire several times before. Yeah, not just in Gwangju, but in other places, in another uh, place like shopping malls, for example, right. was another famous one. Um, but uh, there have been measures in place, but yeah, it has gotten better. Sure. Uh, to be fair, sure. to the, by the some government. measurable standards, yeah, yeah. right? But um, still. Still some way to go. Some way to go. All right, let's turn our attention to our second keyword of the day. High school politicians. So equal representation in public office, that seems to be a basic in um, democracy, Mm -hmm. but uh, how young is too young, for example, right? (laughs) Lawmakers have passed a bill that allows even some high school students to run for public office. Run us through the details. Imagine that. (laughs) Someone. Age is such a sensitive topic, if you think about it, right? I mean, when we talk about drafting men for uh, for the army, for example, Uh or getting your driver's license or legal drinking age, it all comes, what is the appropriate age to allow that. And each country has yeah, different that's true. Uh, standards too. Yeah, it's all relative. But uh, this bill does lower the age threshold for joining political parties uh, from 18 to 16 years old. Now, the legislation is a follow-up, actually, mm. to a revision to the election law designed to allow those as young as 18 to be elected in parliamentary or regional elections. Previously, only those 25 or older were eligible to run in political 
political race is. Mm. Uh, even with the passage of the latest bill, however, those younger than 18 will still need to submit an approval letter from their legal guardians or mm. parents uh, when applying for party membership. They are still minors at mm. the end of the day. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, they do need that consent. Uh, also passed yesterday was a law to mandate at least one Labour representative to be on the board of directors of a public institution. This mm. is probably to better represent uh, the opinions and grievances that uh, workers may have. Mm. Um, this person will be allowed to be on the board for a maximum of three years. That is a two-year basic term that is extendable by one year. That law will uh, take effect from the second half of the year. And there are many other laws that were passed during this um, plenary session, uh, including a few tweaks to that election law, for example, setting up more voting booths mm. for those uh, Korean citizens that are based overseas. Right. Um, that's if the region has more than uh, 30,000 Korean residents living in that area, which... I can think of just a, a few lot. cities. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the town I... Well, town, city. The, um, <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> the town I lived in, yeah. in, uh, in the UK, just south of London, was a Korea town. Town and there is easily more than 30,000 people there. So mm. it's places like that where they'll have to, that they'll uh, set up more booths so mm. people can vote for their 16 year old <laughs> politicians. <laughs> I mean, the possibility is yeah. now there. Right. All right, on to our third keyword of the day. Chip law. Something else that was passed in Parliament yesterday was a bill to spur the country's semiconductor industry. It's come mm. so far if you think about the beginnings of semiconductors. It was a yeah. money guzzling project that some just did not believe in. Mm. Now it's we're the powerhouse. Yeah, exactly. Korea uh, in the likes of Samsung Electronics and yeah. SK Hynix, yeah. they're the top two. Um, chip exporters and manufacturers mm. uh, and this is kind of a special bill as it's being called it's yeah. the first special bill on the local semiconductor industry and it acts to provide practical support and benefits including tax breaks that mm. seems to be the gist of it anyway and it also comes amid fierce competition uh, from the US and China especially China which has been catching up a lot so it's to ensure that human resources stay put in Korea and right. there are proper incentives for that yeah. and so on forth. Yeah, and also the US and China, they have kind of been seeking to realign the global sli- mm. uh, supply chains of key materials mm. uh, mostly used for chips to their benefit as well. So Korea doesn't want to be lagging behind in that. Sure. And also chips are being uh, seen as a core strategic industry for Korea as, as it accounts for a fifth of the nation's total exports. <laughs> so it is a huge, important sector for yeah. uh, the country. Uh, and this bill is basically a Korean equivalent of what's known as the Chips for America Act that was introduced in June last year in the United States with kind of the similar goal Mm -hmm. uh, in place. Uh, Korea's version will similarly give financial support for things like uh, R&D and investments and also strengthening labor as well. Mm -hmm. So you can have all that financial support for companies, but it's no point if you don't have the uh, manpower (laughs) to power it. Now, uh, visa rules will also be loosened and eased to attract valuable personnel from overseas. So Mm. some scouting uh, is in the works as well. And a committee of no more than 20 people will also be formed to come up with ways to further support the strategic industries as well. So this is an ongoing project, if you will. All right. And moving on to our fourth keyword of the day. Early pension. More people are getting their pensions earlier than that perhaps they'd scheduled mm-hmm. for as they suffer financial difficulties due to the pandemic. So mm. what's the latest? Yeah, Statistics Korea data shows uh, the number of people who got their pension early last year uh, actually hit a record of 7,110. The interesting thing, uh, the interesting thing is that those in their 30s to 40s made up Uh, more than two-thirds of the total. Now, the demographic is seen as one that should be most economically active, like the 30 to 40 age group. Thriving in their careers, climbing up the corporate ladder. That's what's normally expected. Yeah, uh, but uh, unfortunately, of course, um, that isn't really the case. Uh, And during the pandemic, a lot of people have suffered. Uh, The amount of money that was withdrawn uh, from these pensions was also uh, nearly 90 billion won. That's twice the amount recorded 
started in 2015. That's when uh, such data uh, was started to be compiled. Um, of course, as I mentioned, this is because of the pandemic. Many people are in debt uh, due to either uh, job loss or they had to close their businesses. So their livelihoods have basically um, been shattered. So they need some sort of uh, money to survive, basically. And right. they're doing that by taking out their pension a bit early. Now, the government has uh, taken note of this and says it will lower the tax rate on such withdrawals uh, and possibly other measures as well to support these people. All right. And on to our fifth keyword of the day. Third party payments. Uh, Apple has finally announced it will comply with the law in South Korea requiring it to allow third party app store payments. So, mm. what's the latest in this, this development? Yeah, so this was kind of like a, a bit of a cause for tension between yeah. uh, the South Korea's government and these uh, US tech giants such as uh, Google and Apple. Uh, and uh, the Apple compliance comes four months after the antitrust law was passed in Korea. Uh, the law also applies, as I said, to Google, which is already in compliance at the moment. It was just Apple that was a bit late to the party. Mm. Uh, There's no immediate date for when the new policy will come into effect, nor what service fee will be charged via the new payment option. Uh, But it should be a reduced charge compared to the current 30% App Store tax on app sales and uh, in-app purchases that uh, Apple have been implementing. Um, The new law also prevents Apple from forcing their in-app billing policies on developers Mm. as well. Uh, Apple said in its statement that it is looking forward to working with the Korea Communications Commission and its developer community to find a solution that benefits um, Korean users. Uh, It kind of left out the details of all the service (laughs) fees and all the nitty gritty stuff. They first want to be Koreas and it sounds like a message to Korean users. Don't leave. Uh, We're trying to abide by these regulations. Exactly. And Korea is a very important market to the company as well. Um, And also other countries are expected to follow suit and many antitrust experts actually believe that Apple will eventually uh, along with Google and these tech giants be forced to adopt this kind of policy uh, globally. So Korea has kind of set a precedent for yeah. this uh, kind of a trend, if you will. And maybe that's why there was such fierce uh, sort of tension, if you will, mm. and a delay in the implementation. Yeah. But now you have it. Mm-hmm. On to our sixth and last keyword of the day. Open to rate hike. So Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has hinted at a further interest rate hikes. Run mm. us through what he has said so far. Yeah, so he noted that the U.S. economy is both healthy enough and in need of tighter monetary policy that likely will entail interest rate hikes. Uh, as well as tapering of monthly asset purchases and smaller balance sheet as well. Uh, Powell made the comments during a confirmation hearing before the the Senate Banking Committee, in which uh, it seemed that Powell is getting some strong support for Mm. a second term. Um, Powell (laughs) said, sorry, I just uh, (laughs) deviated. Throwing it out there. (laughs) Yeah, just uh, I digressed a little bit, but uh, it is noteworthy because obviously this year and uh, in his next term, we'll have Mm. to see what policies are in store. Uh, And Powell himself said he does expect a series of interest rate hikes this year, not just one. Um, This is also to keep inflation in check, he noted. Uh, The US economy is growing uh, swiftly, but it has been hit by repeated waves of uh, COVID infections and, of course, by a surge in inflation. Uh, that has proved stronger and longer actually lasting than economies expected. Uh, But the Fed also has to think of the job market and cooling off the economy can slow hiring for companies as well. Uh, Powell said that keeping price gains, i.e. inflation, under control would actually be critical for achieving a sustainably strong labor market as well. So the kind of policymakers have this kind of balancing act to do. Mm. Um, economists increasingly expect Fed officials to make three or four interest rate uh, increases uh, mm. this year. We'll have to see. All right. Thank you very much, Anna, for this morning's coverage. Mm-hmm. You're we'll welcome. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.